Good morning, gang. What is today? Today is Wednesday. Okay, here we go. And our days get all messed up around holidays here. <clears throat> so, uh, I think we'll leave Nashville alone today. I think you guys have had enough out of me for that for a couple of days. So, wanted to kind of bring you abreast on some of the other stuff that's come out. And don't know if anybody's paid too much attention to this because obviously we're all worried about what's going on here and. I try to pay attention on what's going on in other places as what's inevitably going to come here. So about three, three and a half weeks ago, I did a video called Papers, Please, and I had discussed in their uh, passports and types like that, that you might need to go state by state. And some of you were receptive to it, and some of the people, as normal, called me a whacked out loon. Okay. So... I don't know if anybody caught the news out of Spain here, uh, but ironically, Spain is having a problem getting doctors and nurses to get the jab. And so this is what their health minister, health minister uh, Salvador Illa, has come up with, uh, that the country is going to set up a registry for everybody who refuses the vaccine, okay? And as he quotes, he says, what will be done is a registry, which will be shared with our European partners of those people who have been offered it and have simply rejected it. Now, see, here's where the problem comes, all right? You know, we heard for days on end that, oh, you know, 95% efficiency or efficacy, and, you know, we need to get 70% of the population, uh, you know, uh, given given the, the shot so that, you know, we can have a herd immunity and that'll protect society. And that was our goal by, you know, next summer to do. Okay. Here's where you get the problem, all right? In Spain, they've got a population of 47 million people, okay? So they're what, uh, you know, about 12%, 13% the size of the United States. They expect 15 million to 20 million people to volunteer for this. Okay, so that's about 40, 40 some odd percent. Okay, nowhere close to the 70. You also have France, the same problem. They only have 41 percent of the population that's willing to get stabbed in the arm. <clears throat> that means 59 percent aren't. Okay. You run up on some of these stories uh, on people in the U.S. who have already taken it, okay? And I guess about 2.3% of the population that's already taken it has shown adverse effects from getting stabbed. Hmm. So let me see if I got this right. You have a 99.7% roughly chance of living through this, okay, no problems, uh, but 2.3% of the people are having medical problems because of it. So wouldn't that mean I've got a better chance of being okay if I do nothing than if I do something? Isn't that kind of what we talked about before? All right, so you get, you know, now you have Spain coming up with this. We're going to start a registry, and they're promising they're not going to share it with anybody. And if you believe that, you know, I've got oceanfront property for you in Kansas, not even in Arizona, okay? Uh, why would they create a, res uh, a registry if they're not going to share it? All right, they're going to make this public. We have this little problem. It's called HIPAA, all right, you know, that... You, they can't share your medical information. So that's where we get into the little wristbands or the uh, phone app or whatever that's going to be. All right. It's coming, guys. Papers, please. Like I told you. You know, so then you get into, you know, some of the other parts of this. And we all remember President Trump saying, oh, in the springtime, it will go away, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Sure enough, what happened? We had a flat in the curve, right? If you go look at any graph on uh, cases, it drastically drops in April. And everybody's going, rah, rah, look at us. We flattened the curve. We brought it down in springtime and everything like that. And in summer, it all stayed low. And guess what? 
in October, it started to go back up. Why? Guess what? It's flu season. Okay. Now, has anybody noticed some of the wonderful information about uh, coming coming out of uh, the medical science field? Okay. You know, people under 70 years old have a 99% chance of not dying from the flu, this particular one. Okay. Even those over 70 have nearly a 95% chance of surviving. Okay. That's wonderful. Now, you know, you go into some of the facts on this and doctors at John Hopkins had done this, you know, reported flu cases in just regular flu. Okay. Just, you know, the common flu that you get every year reported cases in 2020 are down 98%. Okay, with no deaths. Wow, we must have cured the regular flu. Okay, you know, deaths from heart disease, deaths from other respiratory ailments, down, plummeted. Nobody's dying from anything this year but COVID. Ain't that amazing? Medical science fixed every problem we have in one year, except for this one. Okay, because everybody's dying from this one. So now we've got to concentrate all our efforts on this. All right. You know, this is where it gets silly. All right. So supposedly there are 326,000 people in the United States that have died from COVID this year. Okay. 326,000 people that have died. My, you know, heartfelt sor sorrow for your loss. Okay. But. We're all going to get there one day, okay? We just, none of us want it to happen today, okay? Here's the problem, all right? When you get into this, if you do the real numbers on that, because we've all seen the stories, you know, guy had a car accident, steering wheel went through his chest. What happened? He died of COVID, okay? You know, the actual facts on here that people are figuring out is it's actually about 6% of that number. Okay, if you do that, that's about 20,000 people that have actually died from COVID. But remember, the hospitals all get paid a lot more money if people die from COVID. We've all seen the stories here too. They get paid, if somebody dies from heart disease, they get paid, for example, I'm gonna make up a number, $20,000. If they died from COVID, they get double, $40,000, okay? We all know most hospitals are for-profit organizations, okay? The bean counters downstairs are going, hmm, what do you die for? Jack, COVID. Okay, this is what's going on, guys. You know, the talk is, at least in Europe now, we're hearing about a registry. Hmm, would that come to the United States? Gee, I wonder, okay? The people all over the world are... The, the amount of people that are volunteering to get stab, stabbed in the arm is dropping like a rock, okay? People don't want it. There was a story about the guy who had a heart attack a couple hours after getting the, the jab in the arm, okay? Now, I'll give you this. I'm not, gonna, I'm not speculating one way or the other if it was because of it. The guy had a history of heart attacks or whatever. Maybe it's very coincidental that he got it and he had a heart attack two hours later. Very possible. But these are things that need to be studied, and he would be a good test case. What was the cause of his heart attack? You know, did the guy have a lot of uh, plaque in his arteries or whatever it was, and that was what caused it? Sure, could have been, okay. But this is, this is the whole point. We've got to look at this and go test it. If now we are at a point where more than half the people don't want the shot, why are they even still pushing it so hard on us? You know, think about it, guys. In nine months, supposedly, we've come up with a vaccine that is 95% effective. Yet, in five decades of the seasonal flu, they have never come up with a shot that was more than 40% effective. Where's the logic in this? Okay. And I think... Maybe it's from all of us talking. Maybe it's because it certainly isn't the mainstream media. 
okay? Because, you know, they're all cheerleaders. They're, you know, go get it. I'm doing it. You know, I always see all the fake videos. But maybe the word is getting out to enough people. And that's from you and me and other people on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and God knows where. And, you know, some of the, uh, I'll use the term alt media sites because they'll actually tell you the truth uh, on stuff about this. Maybe the word's getting out enough to people, but we got to keep doing it because this is this is one way, certainly, that we are all are going to stop the takeover of our country. All right. It's we don't need to be sheep and just do whatever they tell us to do. I think pretty much everybody who watches me, uh, I don't think you guys are sheep. I mean, from the comments I read, everybody's like, hell no, don't trust them, whatever it would be right there with you. All right. So. Keep it up, but just keep your eyes open, all right? Things are happening in other countries that you know they're going to start moving over here, especially when you're talking about, you know, Cuomo or Newsom or Whitmer or any of these wackos, you know, that are running states. And they're going to go, yeah, you know what? This sounds like a great idea. Let's do it here, too. So, you know, do what you can, folks, but it's coming, all right? We all, you can see the writing on the wall. How they're going to get around HIPAA, I have no idea, like I said earlier. But, you know, just keep your eyes peeled. All right? That's what I got for this morning. Have a good one, y'all. Good all out.